Church! It is so great to be here this morning. It's already been an incredible, incredible weekend. Uh, God has been moving powerfully. And uh, it's super encouraging uh, Friday night to see Mary get baptized. Amen. And just the week before, uh, we have Sophia here with us today who got baptized. Amen. Uh, they are some amazing campus women of God and uh, looking forward to God using them in a powerful, powerful way. You know, uh, this morning, uh, God has already uh, blessed the service, blessed us tremendously uh, through the singing and through your smiles and every aspect of the service. And uh, this morning, I really, really want to encourage us and inspire us this morning that God is in control of our lives. You know, many times we... Uh, strive to do and go the directions of our own lives and sometimes we fall short because a lot of times we're not walking with God. And so I want to go ahead and dive right on in. The title of a lesson that for us this morning is Ultimate Life Plan Directed by God. The ultimate life plan that's directed by God. Amen. Let's go ahead and turn over in James chapter 4. Kind of set the tone here for us. Amen. James chapter 4 verse 13. The Bible says, if you don't have a Bible, please look on with someone. James chapter 4 verse 13. He says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. Such All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. James counsels men against foolishness of making plans without considering the will of God. All James is saying is that you cannot make your plans that we wish to make by ourselves. It's got to be directed by God. Then... When we learn and we see His plans, and His plans come through, then we can be in awe. Then we can trust. Then we, whether you, whether you see the plans or not, you've got to trust them no matter what. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the plan is. But when we decide to go on and to our own plans, without the plans of God, a lot of times we fail. You know, for myself... I'm a pretty independent person. I've been independent for a very long time since I was, you know, 13 years old. I've had to learn how to be a, a sort of a man and learn things very early age. And so I grew up sort of independent. But this new concept of being a disciple, when I began to study the Bible in the 90s, it showed me that I cannot go on my plan. It has to be on God's plan. Yeah. And uh, sad, sadly, when God lays out a plan for our lives and we divert from that plan, then a lot of times we see misery. Yeah. You know, the Bible tells us the way of the fool seems right to him. In Proverbs 12, 15. But a wise man will listen to advice. It says also in Proverbs 13, 10, Pride brings quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Yeah. See, we've got to be able to rely on God. I don't know if you're an independent person, but if you are, if without God, there is disaster. And God wants us to be victorious. You know, parents tell our kids to clean the room. And instead, you play video games. You come to church, you tell, come, tell somebody to come to church 15 minutes early, they show up a minute before worship service begins. Mm -hmm. You set the alarm clock for 7 a.m., you need to get at work at 8, 
You spend five, you hit the button, five minute snooze button. Oh. And you get up at 7.30, it takes you 20 minutes to get to work. And you didn't get in the middle of traffic and then all of a sudden, you're late. Wow. The results, you're late, the boss writes you up. And then eventually, if you keep it going, you get fired, right? Amazing. See, God directs our plans. When we try to do things on our own, it's a disaster. Right. I've learned a lot of disastrous things in my life because of the decisions I've made. And eventually, I had to learn a few things and, and move forward and learn from those things so that God can use me powerfully and I don't hold back what God is trying to institute and, 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 and help me in my life to be able to make an impact. Thank God for disciples in the church who are getting promotions. You know, Will Davenport is uh, always getting promotions and employee of the month and all that stuff. It's awesome. Amen, guys? You know, Carrie Ann, uh, she's rising up to the occasion. She got a promotion and an awesome raise. Raise, amen? To God be the glory, right? And as you heard eloquently, my sister shared her testimony and shared, it was boasting in the Lord about her son, uh, Lisa, uh, Noah, uh, really, uh, really being able to uh, wrestle and, and make some achievements there and go to the regionals. And we hope that he'll not only go to the regionals and whip some behind, but he'll go to the state, man, and become the state champion. Amen. <laughs> you got to have great faith to do that. I know that Noah can do it. That guy is a beast. And you know, we all want to do great things. We all want to do great things, but we cannot do those great things without the, the plan of God, being directed by God. Right. You know, uh, God has a plan to prosper us and give us a hope in the future. But we can only do that if we give our whole heart to Him. Amen? Amen. You know, and a lot of times it may not seem that you know, the plan that God lays out is the most important plan to us. It may not even seem like the smartest plan to us. But God always has the best plan. And can I get an amen on that, guys? Amen. God has the best plan. You know, moving to Tampa. When some of us may not have thought it was the best plan. You know, after you got here and you realized there was going to be some struggles, some hard times. But God always has the best plan. Amen. He knew that those who were chosen to be on the mission team here were chosen with a purpose and a plan to win as many as possible. Amen? Amen. He, he knew that you'd find your husband and wife pro preferably right here. And, and so you got to have great faith and believe that your husband and wife is right here. And if they're not, you'll bring them on here, you'll bring them on here to Tampa. Amen? Amen. And maybe you, maybe you haven't met them yet and maybe you're going to have to share your faith with them and bring them in the kingdom. I don't know. But God has the best plan, and you have got to believe it. Amen? Yeah. You know, God has a pl plan that's different plan from ours. Let's go ahead and go into our text. But to get us, give us a little running start of what's going on, let's turn over in Judges chapter 6. We're going to talk about a, a, our friend Gideon. Amen? Judges chapter 6. We'll stay in Judges for quite some time. Verse 1. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. For seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on their land and ruined their crops all the way from Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep or cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them in their camels. They invaded the land and ravished it. Media was so improvised that Israel lights that they cried out to the Lord for help. When they cried out, when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I brought you up out of Egypt and out of slavery. I will rescue you from the hand of the Egyptians and deliver you from the hands of all the oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I'm the Lord your God. I do not worship gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. So what happens? God calls on this guy, Gideon, to be 
to protect you. Israel had done evil for so long that God had allowed them for seven years to improvise and take over that land. And so finally they cry out to God. Finally they cry out to God. And God answers. And He gives Gideon the charge to lead His people out of misery. Let's pick it up in Joshua, uh, Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Starting in verse 1. Point number one, ultimate opportunities from God. Ultimate opportunities from God. Verse one, early in the morning, Jerobel, Bel, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near Hill Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I can't deliver the Midian into your hands or Israel will boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now I announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remain. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the man down to the water. There the Lord told them, Separate those who lap water with their tongues, as dogs laps from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred of them drank with cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees and drank. The Lord said to Gideon, With these three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands, let all the others go home. Let's stop there. This is crazy. God wanted the Israelites to be victorious. But they had 30, they started out with 32,000 men. And that was dwindled down to 300. You're talking fighting thousands upon, thousands upon people. Now how in the world would such a thing happen? How in the world would you be able with 300 men to go against thousands, thousands upon thousands. And God says, listen, why am I doing this? Because I do not want Israel to boast on their own strength. God does not want us to boast on our own strength. He wants us to take the abilities and the talents that we have, honor those abilities and talents, and what you have, do the best that you and I can do. Amen. But you got to go. Gideon in his mind must be going nuts at this point. What in the world is going on? God, why would you do that? We had this mighty army. 32,000. Right. And now we dwindled to 300. See, everybody wants to stack their deck, right? When you play volleyball, you want the tallest people, right? That's right. When you play ultimate frisbee, you want the most athletic, right? You know, when you play football, a video game football, you want to pick the best guys on the football video games, right? Your top players. You want to stack the, stack the deck with the, the best hairstyles. You know, planning a mission team, you want some of the best people when we plant mission teams all over the world. You want the sharpest, the smartest, the cleaning, the, the cleanest uh, uh, looking. You, you want, the, you, you know, the tallest, good looking, the brightest, the, you know, the high IQ and all that kind of stuff. We desire some of that sometimes. We, we, we want the brightest. But God says, no, 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 no. You're going to get the person that is, it, it's not about the talents, it's one with the heart. The one that's the heart, see, that gives their heart. Because with heart, you can do incredible things. Amen. You know, he wants humble, heart, heartsy people. He wanted the people that came here in Tampa to plant the team because you were heartsy. He believed that you would be able to do greater things. Right. You know, he knew that we would turn Tampa upside down. Amen. But see, you know, maybe things didn't go well you thought it would. Because God wanted to make sure we were in a place and a position that we were humble before Him. Amen. That we were totally surrendered before Him. Yep. And that we understood some lessons 
that God was trying to teach us in our characters to trans transform us so that we can be used and effective. And I really believe that this year you guys have made radical changes. And now you're more effective. You know, you see the baptism that are, you see the quality of people that God is bringing in. That's because of your faith and the changes that you've made in your lives. Amen. And that we work together collectively, we can do incredible things. But Gideon, look, man, what in the world? This is great. He could have, he could have made excuses. The question is, are you faithful toward God? Under challenging circumstances Amen. do you believe that God has your best interests at heart you know Gideon is seen here with 32,000 men let's look at verse 14 actually let's, let's continue to read let's, start, start, let's read to verse 8, verse 8 so Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of others now, and the captain immediately laid below him in the valley. During the night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down to the camp, because I am going to give it, give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant pure and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pure and his servant went down to the outpost of the camp. And the Midianites and the Amalekites, all the other eastern people, had settled in the valley. Thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand of the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend about his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such great force that the tent turned over and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. But God had given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Let's stop there. So God has to send Gideon down to listen to Purah and hear this story. He had this vision of, of a large barley bread and these lights tumbling over in his camp and totally destroying his camp. He had to give Gideon a vision to see because obviously God would not have sent them down there if Gideon wasn't totally convinced. But after Gideon went down there and he heard the story, then he knew, okay, this is the power of God. See, guys, Amen. it is the power of God. Yeah. God has given you insight into Tampa, yep. in the surrounding parts of Tampa. Yep. And sometimes we don't believe the insight that's given. And when we don't believe that the insight that's given, we hurt. We diminish our faith. Come on. See, if Gideon had given up, even after he was heard the story that was discussed about him and his men, man, they would have died. They would have died on the battlefield. See, guys, we're on the battlefield. We're on a battlefield that we have got to fight yeah. and not give up. There's a constant battle to suck each of us back into the world. There's a battle to suck each of us and making us think that, you know, God doesn't have a great plan for me. He doesn't have a great plan for my school. He doesn't have a plan for my life, my future. But see, if you believe in the plan of God, that He says He plans to prosper you, give you your hope in the future. But the one thing that He asks us is to seek Him with all of our heart. He says, I will be found by you. Are you seeking God with all of your heart? Or are you giving Him 50%? Are you giving God 99.9%? .9 See, that's not enough. we got to give 100%. You know, here Gideon is seen with 32, reduced to 300. He's getting ready to attack a force that's many times larger than he is. It talks about in verse 12. God is not asking Gideon. For a leap in the dark. He's not asking him. He's asking him to take a clear step of faith. The question I have for you this morning. Are you taking a clear step of faith? You're, you're here not by accident. God brought you and I here with a purpose in mind. Yep. Are you going to answer the call? 
of God. Are you willing this morning to take a clear step of faith? Amen. Are you faithful under the seemingly impossible task that God has before us? See, there's a way out. There's a way to be faithful. The truth is God has always directed your path, even if you don't believe it. You know, I appreciate Mary. You know, Mary had to go through some obstacles. You know, she had to go through, she had to wrestle through some things. And, and once she saw it, it was like a light bulb going off. Elizabeth was sharing, you know, one day she was one way, and the next day she came in after studying the Bible. She was gleaming. She was excited. It was incredible because she went in and studied out the Bible, and God lifted her up, and she got baptized on Friday night. Amen? You know, Sophia, you know, she had to go through some obstacles. She's this amazing, talented woman. She, you know, she, she, everybody knows her on the USF. Everybody knows her. She started about four campus clubs there. She's been president of companies there. But even with, even with Sophia, you know, some so super ambitious. But she said, man, you know, something is missing in my life. And I've got to make a change. And she studied out the scriptures. She saw the Bible. And God changed and transformed her life. Amen. And she's an awesome, solid disciple. Amen. <laughs> and if you're visiting for the first time, God wants to transform your life. But you got to be like, you know, Sophia and Mary, who dig in the word of, who dig in the word of God and, and, and really see that God has a great plan for your life. And as you see that, the light bulb will go off in your heart and your mind, and he will transform you so you can do even greater things. Amen. 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 Knowing God's plan requires prayer. It requires righteousness, doing what is right. It requires patience. But be sure that everything is in His time and not your own time. Amen? Amen. Is anyone in the room, uh, anyone in the room known for patience? Raise your hand. No? I, I, that's what I thought. Uh, I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. See, nobody's known for patience. You know why? Because we are the quick fixer people. We want to get it now. We want it now. We don't want to do anything. We don't want to wait. I've got to have it now. And if I don't get it, I'll do whatever it takes to see the Black Panther movie. I mean, everybody jump on the Black Panther, you know. You know, I'm going to wait until it's $3 in the movie. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. But probably not. But, but I, I may, maybe I'll wait until it's half price. I don't know. My son would probably say, hey, Dad, I really want to go see that Black Panther movie. Everybody's on, on the hype with that. I mean, come on. I mean, amen. I mean, you got act, black actors, you know, the whole theme there. I mean, amen. I mean, awesome. I'm sure it's a great movie. And, and maybe they'll have like, you know, 10 series after this one. You know what I mean? Like the other series. Amen. You know, maybe the culture of the, the universe will change because they see this movie. At least that's what some people, particular people, are probably looking for. I don't know. And may, maybe it just builds up people and, and gives them hope. But see, that's not going to give people hope. What gives people hope is Jesus Christ. Amen, guys? It ain't because you go see the Black Panther movie. You know what I mean? To you know, prove your status and in, in, in who you are and where you come from. You know what I mean? Come on, guys. I mean, really, it's all about God, right? God is colorblind, right? We should be colorblind. Amen? Amen. Moving on with that. But Gideon. Gideon went through the challenges, could have gone through the challenge of life in his mind and his heart. But he simply obeyed God. He simply obeyed God. When we try to guide our own path without God, you may see that it's a different plan. Yeah. If God shows us our plan, it may be a different plan. And it, God's plan is a precise plan. And it is the ultimate plan for our lives. You know, how are we to be reassured of the plan of God? You know, Marley shared this scripture earlier, but I'm going to share it again in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Yeah. See, guys, God just simply says, how do we achieve this? How do we achieve that perfect plan? By reading our Bible daily. Get up early in the morning and watch Steel Dark. Some people have a hard time getting up in the morning. That's okay, but you got to push through and you got to fight through. Amen? Amen. You know, I appreciate the brothers and sisters getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and praying. We're trying to persuade other people to jump on that phone call with us because they need the encouragement. We need the encouragement. But uh, maybe it's going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more persuading. And a little, maybe maybe you got to beat up, beat up a little bit more and say, well, you know, I probably should be praying with some of these brothers and sisters. Because I can't do without it. It's a lot harder when I'm by myself and I'm not really engaged. But, you know, it's, the Bible says spur each other on. What's love and good deeds, right? That's what the Bible says. we got to spur each other on. So in the morning we spur each other on. You know, we have a prayer time at 6 o'clock. And then we have another prayer time at 6.30. And it's awesome because after I leave from praying with the brothers and sisters, we feel connected. We've, we're ready to go. And then to top it off, we make sure we have a cranking, awesome, quiet time. Amen? You guys with me? I don't get any amens on that. Uh, you guys having good, good quiet times? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, awesome. That's what it's all about, guys. Offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. Guys, we've got to trust God. We've got to continually be surrendered to Him. Amen? You know... God's ultimate plan is a distinct plan. You look at verse 13 to 14 of Judges chapter 7. You know, he says, listen, Gideon arrived there as a man was telling the friend a dream. I had a dream and he was saying, a round loaf of barley bread tumbling in the middle of camp. It struck the tent with such great force the tent turned over and collapsed. You know, you think about that situation there. It seems ridiculous. You know, if you're listening to it from the outside, you're like, what does this have to do with us being victorious? You know, uh, and, and destroy, being able to take this, this with 300 men and take this camp out. You know, people must have been like, what? But see, what was Gideon's attitude? Gideon's responded. He went down. He got confirmation. He says, hey, let's go. Let's go. When you're on campus, God gives you confirmation every day if you go on a campus. When you have your quiet, when a sister or brother tells you, when a sister or brother tells you, hey, you know, Guys, God's got a great plan for your life. We're going to go for it. You know, you look in your Bible, you look at the scripture saying, uh, God, we can do, God can do anything that gives us strength. We can do everything through Him who gives us strength, right? Yeah. You know, and God's already given you confirmation. That's right. And then you go on campus and you don't believe He's giving you confirmation and then you stop. You stop and you doubt. God, is this really confirmation you want to give me? Is this really happening? But no, God, God says, guys, you can do this. Yeah. I believe in you. You can do this. You just got to go. That's what Gideon did. He went. God called him. He obeyed. And he went. Sometimes we hold back. Why do we hold back, guys? We hold back sometimes because we don't believe. Gideon wanted to take and restore his city. Restore the faith of the people. And it takes a man and woman who is strong, who believes to restore Tampa, restore the hearts, help people to believe that there is a plan and purpose. See, God has a distinct plan and he has a distinct plan for you and I. So getting his man was surrounded by this enemy. They obeyed and God gave them the victory. God said that this would give them victory, and it did. It What a distinct plan. No man would ever come up with a plan like this. If they had not been willing to follow and obey, yeah. they all would have died. They would have never restored their country. Mm -hmm. See, we've got to restore Tampa. There are people dying. You see, we've got to embrace the opportunity. Opportunities of God. Gideon embraced it, and God gave him a victory. Point number two, ultimate, requires, ultimate requirements given by God. Ultimate requirements given by God. See, there's a requirement in order to be successful. Number one, God's plan requires surrender. Think about it. If Gideon was a man of 32,000 followers, but, the, God, but by not following God's plan... He saw his army reduced 
And when his homage was reduced, you could kind of look at that and go, wow, maybe his pride was crushed. I don't know why God did it. You know, he was reduced from a general, General Gideon, to basically a boot camp officer. And if you really think about it, I mean, the guy was powerful, always man. Sometimes God humbles us in, in, in the position we are and sets us back just so that we can sit back and learn. Because sometimes what happens is we think we've all got it together. Yeah. You know, you, and the only one knows you don't have it together. Everybody else knows you don't have it together, but you. Because there's a way that seems right to a man. Yeah. But in the end, it leads to death, right? It talks about in the Proverbs, yeah. right? Yeah. And see, when we lean on our own way, it says it, it can lead to spiritual death or, or even physical death, guys. Sure. You know, we have an incredible opportunity. And we have an opportunity today to do greater things. You know, those 17 people who were murdered, 12 injured, didn't have that opportunity. They, maybe they perhaps had the opportunity. I hope that they had an opportunity and they found God before that happened. But a lot of people don't. It was really sad. Very, very sad. To hear someone just comes in a, a school and shoot up. This is not the first time. A girl was in the church and just shoots him up. It's not the first time. And so what are we going to do about it? See, tomorrow's not promised. You heard that earlier, right? Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. You know, we've got to, you know, make some decisions in our lives. You know what? Yeah, I want to make an impact. Come on, bro. You can't wait until you get out of school to make an impact. You need to make an impact now and get a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. That's what, it's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, it took great faith to, to watch 22,000 men leave then another 900, uh, 9,700 men leave. You know, Gideon and his 300 who remained had walked in obedience. You know, they walked in obedience to God. And that's why God gave them the victory. How obedient are you? Yeah. Teens, how obedient are you, teens? We got the teens in the fellowship with us today. Woo! You know, the teens, I want you to understand. Your training ground is in your home with your parents. And who you are in your home is who you're going to be out in the world. Mom and dad is not always going to be around with, uh, with you guys. So you better take the lessons that are learned from mom and dad or your mom. And you better grasp, grab hold of those things and those principles that you are learning. So that it will go well with you in the future. Yeah. You want to be victorious. You want to do greater things. Then you need to learn, number one, from God. And then you need to learn from your parents. Amen? Amen. And maybe you're not ready to learn from God right now. But you better learn from the characteristics and the qualities, the great qualities of your parents. Because I tell you right now, without the, the training and the learning and taking hold of it, you'll be doomed when you get out on your own. Yeah. You, got it, you got to hold on to it. Yeah. You know, your parents aren't, they, they aren't perfect. Your parents make mistakes. But you know what? We keep fighting because we love God. And that's the thing that you can take. From godly parents. Yeah. You know. Your campus student. Hopefully your parents have given you some great uh, tools uh, to take to school. And But uh, a lot of times the things we learn from our parents are not enough. Yeah. We've got to go to God and learn the, yeah. and, and learn the ultimate plan of God. Amen? Amen. God's plan requires submission. For God's plan to succeed, Gideon and his army had to submit to that plan. And because they submitted to that plan, God gave them victory. Are you submitted in your heart even this morning? Amen. Because if you're not, you're doomed. So I want to encourage you to turn that thing around, get with somebody, talk about it, figure out what you need to do to make the changes, necessary changes you need to make, and make it happen. Amen? Yeah. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message heard through the word about Christ. See, faith comes from hearing the message, guys. You've got to hear the message every day. You may not hear my voice, but you need to hear the voice of God through His Word. Amen? Amen. That is the key, guys. Because I tell you what, you can go and you can listen to a sermon all day and it'll spar you for the day, but tomorrow comes up, what are you going to do? That's, it. That's why we in the church we take notes, right? We're supposed to be taking notes. We get our pen, we take a sheet of paper, because you don't want to just go by what I say. You want to go back and you want to study it out for yourself and get your own convictions. Amen, guys? That's why we take notes. If you don't take notes and you think you have this, you know, incredible, incredible mind and you just a memory, 
but your life does not reflect that you're taking notes, that you're really going after God, then you're foolish. You got to take and listen to the words of God. Amen? Amen. Come on, Anthony. You know, you got to trust the ultimate requirement given by God. That requirement is simply reading your Bible. You got to pray. You got to beg God. Get with the person who invited you and find out uh, what do I need to do to help my faith to be solidified. And I guarantee you, these men and women here in this church, they will be happy to help you. Yeah, you know, it wasn't until, you know, many, many years ago in the 90s, somebody reached out to me. You know, I was managing a restaurant and uh, dancing uh, during the day and dancing at night as a professional dancer. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of moving along, going on. You know, it's interesting because I had just uh, broke up with my, my, my girlfriend. And uh, so I had no distractions that were, were in my life at that time. And so, you know, God knew that this was the perfect time. Okay, uh, I've, I've gotten rid of distractions in Anthony's life here, most of the, the bigger distraction. And so now it's the time I'm going to send somebody in Anthony's life, and I'm gonna, he's going to share his faith with me, and I'm going to help him become a Christian. And uh, I walked in. Uh, he invited me. I said, oh, and he talked about the arts and stuff. There was a ministry that was called the daytime ministry during that time. Artists that met together during the daytime and then they performed at night. And so I got a chance to see what that was all about. I was inspired. Just like some of you have come today, you see people hugging. You see people uh, singing uh, a cappella most of the time. They're, they're united. They're having fun. It's awesome. They're encouraging you. They're interested in your life. They're not talking about themselves because they care more about you than themselves. And that's what I saw, and that was very attractive to me. And one thing to, to another, I started studying the Bible, and three weeks later, uh, the Lord helped me to become a disciple. And I'm just flat out fired up to be a disciple. So nearly 27 years in the Lord, God has really transformed my life, and I've got more transforming to do, as some of you guys may know. Amen. And uh, that's okay. I can say that because I haven't arrived. Amen. And so, uh, God, you've got to trust the ultimate plan that God has for your life. If you don't trust that, then you're due. And so don't wait till tomorrow. You, today is the day, not tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Point number three, last point. Obedience produces ultimate victory. Obedience produces ultimate victory. You know, verse 21, we saw earlier, it says here, uh, while each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying out as they fled. When 300 Trumpets sounded, the Lord caused men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shittim, towards uh, Zerah, as far as the border of Abel, Mahoah, and Taboth. Israelites of Nepetili, Asher, and Manasseh were called out, and they pursued the Midianites. It was really interesting because you get to see the plan unfold. You get to see the plan unfold with those lights and the trumpets. You know, guys are half asleep. They probably, some of them were probably drunk. Can you imagine a horn blowing? Oh, boom. And then all of a sudden lights and everybody's going crazy. And then all of a sudden these guys are so delirious, probably half drunk, that they were fighting each other. They were killing each other. That's how powerful God is. I mean, you're talking 300 men with thousands upon thousands of the enemies. They turned to themselves. That is the power of God. Yeah. See, God fights our battles for us. Come on. He fights our battles for us, guys. He knows what's best. You see, God has the ultimate plan. You know, God's enemies are vanquished. Come on. Why? Because Gideon obeyed. Amen. We have to become more obedient people. If you don't have a job, get a job. You know, we got a challenge coming up here. We're trying to raise fifty thousand yeah. dollars. You know, it takes great faith to come up with fifty thousand dollars with a small group. It takes a lot of faith, guys. Yeah. And some of you guys are still struggling with your faith. You don't believe. And see, if you don't believe in that area, that's going to trickle down in other areas of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you have been around. You still don't have a job, or you're not really aggressively going after it, making it happen. Guys, it, 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 you, can, you, can, you can give all your gifts and talents you want and serve in the church, but bottom line, we need money. Yep. We need money. You can bring and bring in rice and beans uh, all you want. 
You can, you can bring in cookies and, and all those things. You can set up the mics and all that stuff. But we need money. Yeah. The world goes around. Without money, we can't survive. Without paid staff, we can't survive. And so if you struggle with money, then you need to get over it and make the money you need to make and believe that God will take care of your life. Yeah. Some of you in the church, you have it tithe. You don't give consistently. That's not a disciple. I want you to understand, right. that is not a disciple. That's right. And if someone came over and they took over the church... They say, you got people who are not tithing? Yeah. They're not disciples. That's right. They are not disciples. Why are they still on your membership? They are not disciples. Yeah. But see, this is the year of grace, right, guys? That's right. This is the year of grace. Guys, you need to get radical. Because what you and I have to contribute to God in order to build this kingdom, we've got third world cities, third world countries that people are less fortunate than we are. You're in the greatest, the most amazing, the, the, the most talented America. You can make as much money as you want to make so that we can build God's kingdom. Guys, this is the week that uh, you know, we, we, out of the grace of God, you know, we, we've got some extended time to be able to come up, to be able to reach these goals on a monthly basis. Yeah. Are you going after it? On, you know, we talked about, hey, we need to come up with about 170, you know, monthly in order to be able to reach that goal of 50,000 uh, weekly, weekly, 170 weekly to be able to reach that 50,000. How is it going? You've got to have great faith, guys. You've got to have great faith. You can't be in and out. Because I'm struggling here, I'm struggling there, I don't believe this. We've shown you, we've given you everything. You've seen the miracles. Amen. You've, your life was a miracle. You've seen Mary getting baptized. you see Sophia getting baptized. You've seen you get baptized. Right, right. Guys, we are a unit, a body, and the body needs to be united. See, Gideon would not have been able to win this victory if the, they were not united. Amen. You know, they would not have been complaining, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. They all got on board. Right. Stop, guys, stop being faithless. God has a great plan. You can do it with the help of God. Guys, you, you don't call yourself a disciple if you're not willing to give everything. Everything. When you counted the cost, when you made a decision to be a disciple, you said, I will give up everything. I will do whatever it takes. I am sold out. Well, if you are sold out, then be sold out. Amen. Show it through your life. Amen. And, and your giving in every area of your life. Not just financially. Because that's, that's what it's about. That's how we're going to win. Tamper over. You know, God says He knows the plans He has for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's not for me, that's from God. Then you will call and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Yeah. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Oh, well, I'm doing the best I can. Are you? I hope so. Amen. I hope so. He says, seek him with all your heart. What does that look like for you? Do you dream? Do you pray? When you get up in the morning, what is seeking God? Do you, do you, when, you walk, when you're riding in the car and you're on the road, do you think about God? Come on, preach. When you're in the shower, do you think about God? You know, when you are sitting down eating breakfast, do you think about God? When you're at school and, 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 and you're listening to your professor tell you, do you, do you, are you praying God to give you insight on these things so that you can use your gifts and talents for Him? Come on, bro. Come See, on. everything should be about God. It is not about men, guys. See, we are not in here because of men. So many times when challenges happen, we look at men. 
If Gideon was looking at men and wasn't looking at God, he would not have been victorious in this battle. Right. We've got to get God focused, not man focused. Amen. If you get God focused, you will do great things. But if you're man focused, if you're man, if you're in it for the relationships and not in it because of your convictions, you you won't last very long. You will not last very long. It's got to be God-focused, guys. And what does that look like? That means you are begging God. You are pleading with God. God, save me. Help me to deal with these uh, insecurities in my life. Help me to deal with the pride in my life. Help me to deal with the, 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 the struggles of life. Help me to believe and believe that I can be fruitful. Believe that I can make an impact. Yeah. See, Gideon believed. Yeah. And that's why God gave him the victory. He says he will gather you from all the nations where, he, where you've been banished. He will bring you back from a place which he've carried you from exile. See, guy, our exile is before we became disciples. That's right. That's when before we became disciples, we were sinning. We were in sexual immorality. We were in purity. Some of you were in drugs. You know, some of you have, uh, you have thought about uh, committing suicide and, 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 and all those things that, that we go through. That's, that was your exile. Now God has, has brought you out of this. He says, listen, guys, this is a time. That's right. we, want, we, we don't want to stay, you know, a, a small little church. We want to be a big church. Because that means that we are planting churches. We are, we are growing. We are preaching the gospel. And God is moving in our lives. Amen. See, what was the outcome? The outcome is simply verse 24. Of Judges chapter 7. Come on, girl. Gideon sent messages throughout the hill country of Ephraim and saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim called out and seized the waters of Jordan as far as Beth Barah. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Orbit on the rock of Oreb and Zeb on the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. Not only they defeated them, they humiliated them. They took off their heads and held them up. That showed the power of God. We don't do that anymore. Amen, guys? We certainly don't take off heads. But here's the spiritual part of it today. 21st century. 21st century... This is how we deal with things. This. this is your sword right here. This is your sword. And with that sword, brothers and sisters, and those visiting, we've got to be able to use it. And use it effectively. Amen? Because we understand. Now understand, this is an ultimate opportunity for you this morning. We also understand the requirements of God. We also understand that if we take advantage of the ultimate opportunities if we take an advantage of the requirements that are given by God and that in itself brings the ultimate victory and we all want to be victorious amen yeah. and so I want to encourage you and inspire you that whatever's going on in your life whatever obstacles in your life God can help you and I to be victorious yeah. he will help you even today you sit down and study the Bible with someone who invited you and see what God's plan is for your life so that He can direct your plan. And His plans will always be successful for you and I. To God be the glory. Amen.